Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I did anything with um, with voiceover or commentary, so welcome back uh, to another DCS video here in the F-14 Tomcat. And uh, the reason I'm in an F-14 today is because um, if you're not already aware and if you're a newer player to DCS, um, DCS allows anybody to basically have a trial period of 14 days where you can essentially try any of the DCS modules for free um, in full capacity um, and then once it expires you can redo it again after six months and you can uh, either do it do one module at a time which is my preferred way of doing it where you just enjoy and test drive the modules or uh, do them all at the same time so it's a fantastic opportunity it's a way to uh, basically try some of these modules before you decide to commit and um, here on, we're in the first takeoff and I will shut up here once the uh, afterburners kick in because you probably won't be able to hear me and it's better that uh, you guys enjoy the glorious sounds of the F-14's uh, engines here and we'll keep our commentary going here after that. Well, now that uh, the deafening sound of the afterburners is, uh, is gone, I'm back in the cockpit here after a takeoff and I'm taking a look here. The first thing I do is I take a look at the uh, analog airspeed indicator because um, I'm used to flying the F-18, uh, which is all digital, and it was quite surprising for me to, to find uh, to adjust to the F-14's analog speed. Um, it's something I refer to quite often, uh, especially on approach and landing, right? So, uh, definitely something very different to get used to. So here we took off and now we're, I'm just uh, testing the, the um, top speed uh, or full throttle performance and uh, watching those, uh, those wing sweep back. Which is extremely cool. And uh, here we'll uh, listen to some more of that glorious sound in, the, in a second from the engines. Yeah, so that shimmering um, when the afterburners are lit is just absolutely spectacular. It's one of the things that I uh, really loved uh, from watching uh, trailers and videos of this aircraft. Um, you know, heat blurs uh, have become known in, in their F-14 model for just how much attention to detail they've uh, put into these uh, into this aircraft right and that is one of the things I like the most is just uh, the shaking the vibrations uh, and everything that goes makes you really feel like you're flying this aircraft so here is a uh, approach to my first landing um, again not having that speed indication um, on the HUD and you can see me looking down I think that's, I think that's a stall warning I don't really know uh, but I'm kind of guessing my way through here um, on my first landing through an airstrip here in uh, uh, Batumi. 
and uh, just eyeballing it here, pulling up and uh, letting this basically the airplane stall. Touchdown. And the thing I didn't quite uh, expect is uh, the crazy rudder inputs that you needed to keep this thing on track. And uh, obviously, you can see that I'm not doing a very great job. Um, Shit, you're too fast! <laughs> and Jester agrees. <laughs> and that was my first landing, guys. <laughs> And so what ended up happening is I somehow got stuck there um, once I landed and um, went off into the uh, the grass there off on off the uh, runway. And no matter how much afterburn or anything, it just I don't know what it was. I just couldn't get off, so I had to restart here and uh, decided to do an external takeoff this time with you know not from the cockpit. But I want to take a quick opportunity now to just chat about you know this trial feature in DCS and choosing um, a module so you know having tried this uh, this gives me an opportunity to test out this uh, you know legendary aircraft um, and and get an idea what it feels like but um, you know I've I already have more modules than I can really master. The only one that I really got can call myself proficient in is the F-18 and I have also the F-16 and there's just no way like this aircraft is even more complicated in many other ways uh, than those more modern aircraft. Uh, it doesn't have as many bells and whistles on the, uh, uh, the displays but it has so many other systems um, and it takes a long time to um, to learn these systems, right? Uh, and so my suggestion would be to essentially you know learn one module, like, like trial, the, trial the different modules uh, see what we really love and then stick to one of those modules uh, learn it really well and learn to do everything that the game offers um, from starting up cold um, aviating and everything else uh, navigating communicating weapon system air to air air to ground uh, radar systems and once you've done that uh, and mastered one then you can think about you know going to another aircraft that's uh, at least my opinion um, and here what I'm doing um, is I was just testing out the maneuverability in, of the F-14 um, and yeah it's, it's, it's <laughs> more or less they all feel the same like it, you know I, I'm not a good enough pilot to really know the difference between this and F-18 and F-14 um, the one thing I can tell you is that this thing has a ton more power. Uh, with the F-18, you can barely be struggling to reach Mach 1 at these altitudes, and with this thing, you can easily go to Mach 1.2. Um, so you can definitely feel that there is a lot more power there. some more um, awesome sounds and sights of the F-14.
So after uh, doing my uh, <laughs> first uh, semi-crappy landing uh, on an airfield and playing around with the aircraft and getting a feel for it, uh, obviously the next step was to find the carrier out in, out at sea and uh, go try landing on it, right? So that's what I'm doing here. Um, We're Joker fuel. <laughs> Joker fuel, yeah. Um, so. I got a little worried there with <laughs> my fuel and immediately cut off the afterburners. And yeah, just approaching the aircraft carrier here. Um, I by no means uh, do this the proper way. I don't. It's not a proper case one recovery. And uh, yeah, essentially I'm gonna eyeball and guess everything. I don't think I even use flaps. Um, I don't even know how, what the approach speed is, um, I'm basically guessing what speed and altitude I need to be at, uh, I don't even follow, follow the glide slope or anything, I'm just eyeballing everything here at this point. I think uh, there goes the gear and the hook, you know, G and H, uh, it's easy enough. Didn't have to even bind those. Love the little sounds and the thumping sounds there when you change uh, the throttle position or lower the gear. Really amazing job from Eatler. Here I am uh, trying to put the flaps back and they're stuck right behind the uh, the uh, throttles and I don't have them key bound to a key so I'm like yeah at this point I'm like whatever I'm still <laughs> checking my speed there I think I'm like at 300 plus knots and uh, spoiler alert uh, <laughs> this is not gonna be a great approach and um, no surprise there if you're trying to approach at 250 knots at an air carrier uh, definitely not gonna end well I also overshoot here, <laughs> so I'm trying to recover the center line, huge bank angles, uh, there's the indicator, I don't even know if I'm like super high or super low, I'm coming in like over 200 knots, I don't even know what that sound is, it's probably aircraft telling me. Uh, not to do this and here I come in and I realize yep so <laughs> full afterburner gear up and around we go Can try I guess. Realize that I need to really slow this aircraft down. Uh, you can see from the needle there I'm doing over 300 knots already. Alright this time <laughs> flaps are full back. I don't even know if I'm at maximum flap speed. But yeah I, I think I just missed it there. I was like, but I think it bled speed really fast when I put the flaps down and I put the gear down. So now um, aircraft is nice and dirty. Oh, I love that thump from the... Um, I think it's either the gear or the engines, I don't know, but it sounds absolutely incredible. Um, so here I'm going to try to come in slower this time and hopefully make it. longer final this time <laughs> to line up aircraft carriers way there in the distance and uh, yeah since I didn't know what my uh, speed should have been at um, I'm just eyeballing it and uh, making sure that my angle attack is at least positive uh, you can see there it's um, five degrees above the horizon um, 
that was my aim is just to throttle back and when I hear this stall horn I'm <laughs> you know I'm slow enough that I may potentially make it I guess the other thing I should note at this time is before you jumping in the aircraft all I did is I did the uh, cold start tutorial and skipped half the steps for the startup uh, I was like okay thanks and then I went and uh, created a custom mission with um, a hot start um, and that was all the training I <laughs> or that I received to fly this aircraft before attempting this so that's why right here I think that's the stall horn I don't know how fast I'm going I'm just eyeballing this I'm like keep a positive angle of attack try to go near the stall speed and just hope for the best you can see that I'm off center line but nothing can be done about it boom and I actually catch a wire where's the two wire two wire thanks Jester for letting us know and uh, there you go you know <laughs> my first aircraft landing um, on my second attempt ever in a brand new DCS module <laughs> here I am you can tell that I have no clue how to <laughs> operate this aircraft because I want to like sweep, sweep the wings back and park it and I'm like nothing is happening I don't know what's happening there wings are not doing anything but yeah essentially I, I go to, f to the front of the ship and I park it but um, yeah, just uh, to conclude here, uh, absolutely amazing aircraft as it, it lives up to, you know, the interior, you can see this, all the wear and tear, it's absolutely amazing. Um, such a great uh, cockpit, um, very vintage, you know, old school analog gauges, uh, just a different flavor, it, it really lets you know uh, that, you know, gives you a lot of feedback when you're flying it it, vape, it vibrates it shakes uh, on you it rattles and all sorts of sounds like it might just break any minute so very different from the f-16 and f-18 you know experience so for that reason alone I would recommend it uh, but as I said earlier just pick one module and go for it if you pick the f-14 stick with it it's a multi-role aircraft, you can do anything with it. If not, I would recommend the F-18 as an alternative. Uh, you can do anything in the game. Um, as opposed to say an F-16 or any of the land-based aircraft which can't land do carrier ops. You know, some the F-14, F-18 they can do carrier ops, so that would be, that was at least my choice was to start off. And then I would recommend uh, trying some modules that are completely different, such as the World War II modules or the helicopter modules, and picking one of each type, right? That gives you the most uh, diverse type of the gameplay here in DCS. By the way, awesome. <laughs> that water flowing by, oh my god. It's so amazing. Here, I'm trying not to fall, fall over. But yeah, I park it here, and um, yeah, definitely enjoyed it, but not something I will buy until I master at least uh, some of the other modules that I have um, like the Harrier, <laughs> the Apache um, I, even the F-16 you know. um, but if you're a Top Gun fan and you, you have to, you have the need for speed I mean I think besides the F-18, nothing beats this thing in sp speed-wise. Um, you know, and it's definitely a, an iconic, legendary plane that belongs in an aircraft carrier. And uh, really glad if you haven't seen the most recent Top Gun movie, uh, go check it out. I probably plan on seeing it a second time. It was that good, and. Uh, and after watching watching that, the first thing you will want to do is jump in an F-14 or an F-18, get on a carrier, and um, there's really 
no nothing better than DCS to to go and experience being a naval aviator after watching Top Gun. Absolutely phenomenal game, phenomenal module from Heathler and this super carrier module also highly recommended. Uh, there's nothing quite like it anywhere else on the market and uh, yeah see you guys in the air and have a good one thanks